Richard Keith Army, born July 7, 1940, is an American economist and politician. He was a U.S. representative from Texas's 26th Congressional District (1985–2003) and House Majority Leader (1995–2003). He was one of the engineers of the Republican Revolution of the 1990s, in which Republicans were elected to majorities of both houses of Congress for the first time in four decades. Army was one of the chief authors of the Contract with America. Army is also an author and former economics professor. After his retirement from Congress, he has worked as a consultant, advisor, and lobbyist. Topic: <laughs> Early life, education, and career. Army was born on July 7, 1940 in the farming town of Cando, North Dakota, the son of Marion and Glenn Army. He grew up in a rural area. He graduated from Jamestown College with a B.A. and then received an M.A. from the University of North Dakota and a Ph.D. in economics from the University of Oklahoma. Army is a member of the Pi Kappa Alpha fraternity. Army served on the economics faculty at the University of Montana from 1964 to 1965. He was an assistant professor of economics at West Texas State University from 1967 to 1968, at Austin College from 1968 to 1972, and at North Texas State now the University of North Texas from 1972 to 1977. He served as chairman of the economics department at North Texas State University from 1977 to 1983. Army has been married twice. His first marriage ended in divorce. He married his second wife, Susan Army, after she called off the wedding three times. He and his second wife have five grown children together. U.S. <laughs> House of Representatives Army was elected to the United States House of Representatives in 1984 in Texas's 26th Congressional District, narrowly defeating freshman Congressman Tom Vandergriff. Army was one of six freshman Republican Party congressmen elected from Texas in 1984 that were known as the Texas Six Pack. He would never face another contest anywhere near that close, and was re elected eight more times, never dropping below 68% of the vote. His strongest performance was in 1998, when the Democrats didn't field a candidate and Army defeated a Libertarian with 88% of the vote. This mirrored the growing Republican trend in his district. In his early years in Congress, Army was influenced by Austrian economist Ludwig von Mises. <inaudible> <inaudible> Leadership challenge In 1994, Army, then House Republican Conference Chairman, joined Minority Whip Newt Gingrich in drafting the contract with America. Republican members credited this election platform with the Republican takeover of Congress. Gingrich became Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, and Army became Gingrich's second-in-command as House Majority Leader. Gingrich delegated to Army an unprecedented level of authority over scheduling legislation on the House floor, a power traditionally reserved to the Speaker. In the summer of 1997, several House Republicans attempted to replace Gingrich as Speaker. The attempted few began on July 9 with a meeting between Republican Conference Chairman John Boehner of Ohio and Republican Leadership Chairman Bill Paxson of New York. According to their plan, House Majority Leader Army, House Majority Whip Tom DeLay, Boehner, and Paxson were to present Gingrich with an ultimatum, resign, or be voted out. Under the new plan, Paxson was to replace Gingrich as Speaker. However, Army balked at the proposal, and told his Chief of Staff to warn Gingrich about the coup. On July 11, Gingrich met with senior Republican leadership to assess the situation. He explained that under no circumstance would he step down. If he were voted out, there would be a new election for Speaker, which would allow for the possibility that Democrats and dissenting Republicans would vote in Dick Gephardt as Speaker. On July 16, Paxson offered to resign his post, feeling that he had not handled the situation correctly. Later congressional career In 1995, Army referred to openly homosexual Congressman Barney Frank as, "...Barney Fag." Army said it was a slip of the tongue. 
Frank did not accept Army's explanation, saying, I turned to my own expert, my mother, who reports that in 59 years of marriage, no one ever introduced her as Elsie Fagg. After heavy Republican losses in the 1998 elections, Army had to defeat a challenge for his majority leader post from Steve Largent of Oklahoma, a member of the Republican class of 1994. Although Army was not popular in the Republican caucus, Largent was thought to be too conservative for some moderate Republicans, and Army won on the third ballot. Soon afterward, Speaker-elect Bob Livingston of Louisiana announced he wouldn't take the post after the revelation of an extramarital affair. Army initially seemed to have the inside track to become Speaker. As Majority Leader, he was the number two Republican in the chamber. However, he was still badly wounded from Largent's challenge, and opted not to run. The post eventually went to Chief Deputy Whip Dennis Hastert of Illinois. Army also feuded with focus on the family leader James Dobson in his later terms in office. Army wrote, As majority leader, I remember vividly a meeting with the House leadership where Dobson scolded us for having failed to deliver for Christian conservatives, that we owed our majority to him, and that he had the power to take our jobs back. This offended me, and I told him so. Army states that focus on the family targeted him politically after the incident, writing, Focus on the family deliberately perpetuates the lie that I am a consultant to the ACLU. Army has also said that, Dobson and his gang of thieves are real nasty bullies. Army served another four years before announcing his retirement in 2002. In his final term, he was named chairman of the United States House Committee on Homeland Security and was the primary sponsor of the legislation that created the Department of Homeland Security. After Army's retirement, fellow Texan Tom DeLay was elevated to Army's majority leader position. Army's son, Scott, ran for his father's seat in the 2002 election, but lost in the Republican Party runoff to Michael C. Burgess, who would go on to hold the strongly Republican 26th district for the GOP in November. One of Army's former staff members was Republican State Representative Dade Phelan of Beaumont in House District 21. Advisor and lobbyist <laughs> D.L.A. Piper After leaving office, Army joined the Washington office of the law firm D.L.A. Piper as a senior policy advisor. Army was also the firm's co-chairman of its Homeland Security Task Force. In 2009, Army's FreedomWorks group launched a campaign against health care reform proposals, accusing the Obama administration of attempting to socialize medicine. DLA Piper was concerned about the conflict of interest, particularly since their clients were spending millions in advertising and lobbying money to support the passage of health care reform, and FreedomWorks was linked to demonstrations at town hall forums where health care reform was being discussed. Amid what Politico called the health care flap, DLA Piper asked Army to resign in August 2009, and he left the firm. FreedomWorks In 2003, Army became co-chairman of Citizens for a Sound Economy, which in 2004 merged with Empower America to become FreedomWorks. The group's name was derived from a common Army saying, Freedom works. Freedom is good policy and good politics. FreedomWorks is a conservative nonprofit organization based in Washington, D.C. In his role as chairman, Army was a national political figure. He traveled widely, meeting with activists and legislators. In 2005, he testified before the President's Advisory Panel on Tax Reform and debated Governor of Colorado Bill Owens on a tax increase ballot measure. The Center for Public Integrity reported that Army was paid $500,000 per year and flew first class, along with other FreedomWorks employees, for work travel. On December 3, 2012, Mother Jones reported that Army, in an email on November 30 to Matt Kibb, president of FreedomWorks Inc., resigned his positions as chairman and trustee of FreedomWorks and severed all his ties to that organization, effective immediately. Mother Jones reported that Army's reasons for resigning were matters of principle. It's how you do business as opposed to what you do. But I don't want to be the guy to create problems. 
The Associated Press reported that in September 2012, Army agreed to resign by November 2012 in exchange for $8 million in consulting fees paid in annual $400,000 installments. On December 25, 2012, The Washington Post reported that Army had escorted Matt Kibb and FreedomWorks Vice President Adam Brandon out of the FreedomWorks offices with the help of an armed guard on September 4, 2012. Army reportedly wanted FreedomWorks to support Todd Akin after his controversial legitimate rape comments topic <inaudible> <inaudible> political positions topic <inaudible> <inaudible> economy and taxation as a free market economist influenced by the ideas of Milton Friedman army favored relatively open immigration and advocated for free trade Army was one of Congress's fervent supporters of privatization of Social Security and phasing out of farm subsidies. He was a strong supporter of replacing the progressive tax with a flat tax. Army was very critical of a competing tax reform proposal that would replace the current system with a national sales tax, the fair tax. During his time in Congress, Army conceived the Base Realignment and Closure Commission that became responsible for closing military bases as a cost-cutting measure. After his retirement from Congress, he told the New York Times, A lot of people say if you cut defense, you're demonstrating less than a full commitment to our nation's security, and that's baloney. <laughs> <laughs> Health care In 1999, Army sponsored the Fair Care for the Uninsured Act, something that would later be proposed by Mark Kennedy after Army left Congress. It proposed using tax credits to offset the cost of health insurance, allowing individuals to go outside the workplace to obtain private health coverage directly from an insurance company, and the creation of a safety net for the uninsured. The law never made it through Congress, but some of these concepts did make it into the Massachusetts Health Care Reform of 2006 and from there into the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act in 2010. Army is a vocal opponent of the individual mandate to purchase health benefits. He also voiced public opposition to the individual mandate when it was proposed by First Lady Hillary Clinton during the contentious national health care reform debate of 1993 and 1994. <laughs> <laughs> Foreign policy In 2006, Michael Isakoff's book Hubris included Army as an on-the-record source, who said he was initially reluctant to support the Bush administration's call for war with Iraq, and that he had warned President George W. Bush that such a war might be a quagmire. Army said that the intelligence presented to him in support of the war appeared questionable, but he gave Bush the benefit of the doubt. According to Barton Gelman, former Vice President Dick Cheney told Army that Saddam Hussein's family had direct ties to Al-Qaeda and that Saddam was developing miniature nuclear weapons. Army then voted for the Iraq War, but after it became clear this was not true, stated that he "...deserved better from Cheney than to be bullshitted by him." Robert Draper's Dead Certain, the presidency of George W. Bush recounts a conversation in late summer 2002 between Army and Cheney. Army insisted that American forces would get mired down in Iraq if they invaded, but Cheney offered this assurance. They're going to welcome us. It'll be like the American army going through the streets of Paris. They're sitting there ready to form a new government. The people will be so happy with their freedoms that we'll probably back ourselves out of there within a month or two. On May 1, 2002, on MSNBC's Hardball with Chris Matthews, Army called for Palestinians to be expelled from the Palestinian-occupied territories. Army, a staunch supporter of Israel, repeatedly said that he would be content with Israel completely taking over all of the Palestinian-occupied territories and transferring the Palestinian population out. He further stated that the Palestinians could then build their state in the many Arab nations that have many hundreds of thousands of acres of land. <laughs> Books Army, Dick The Freedom Revolution. Washington, D.C., Regnery. ISBN 978-0-89526-469-5.
Army, Dick The Flat Tax, A Citizen's Guide to the Facts on What It Will Do for You, Your Country, and Your Pocketbook. New York, Ballantine. ISBN 978-0-449-91095-5. Army, Dick 2003. Army's Axioms, 40 Hard-Earned Truths from Politics, Faith, and Life. New York, Wiley. ISBN 978-0-471-46913-1. Army, Dick, Matt Kibb, 2010. Give Us Liberty, A Tea Party Manifesto. New York, William Morrow. ISBN 978-0-06-201587-7. Army, Richard K. 1977. Price Theory, A Policy Welfare Approach. New Jersey, Prentice Hall. ISBN 0-13-699694-9.